guys, welcome. This is Jen Frost with Faith and Fabric, and I'm excited to welcome you to our latest edition of Free Motion Friday. Today we're going to be building on a theme that we did last time. I'll put a link up here to our spirals. Last time we were working on creating some really neat spirals, and we talked a lot about coming in our spirals and going out of our spirals. So today what we're going to do is build on that concept. Now, before I get too far into our video, I first wanted to remind you that the chapters are down below and you can access those anytime you need. And we are going to first also take a look at our scripture to see where today's inspiration came from. Today's inspiration comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's easy to become upset with someone when they've wronged you. And if you're like me, sometimes you get caught in that downward spiral of, I can't believe she said that to me, or I should have said this when she says that to me, or next time I see her, I'm going to do this. But scripture teaches us that a wrong plus a wrong does not make a right. As much as sometimes we want that to happen, right? Instead, uh, we are told through scripture to let goodness overcome evil, that it's only goodness that's going to get us out of that ugly, nasty downward spiral that we can sometimes find ourselves in. That whole point that two wrongs don't make a right. Now, forgiveness isn't always something that we have to offer the moment we're wronged. Um, forgiveness also doesn't mean that you have to make that, that person who just completely wronged you your new, your new best friend. What it does mean is you need to practice that forgiveness in your heart. And over time, you need to let that go. You need to forgive that person for what they've done. Now, again, that doesn't mean you have to become buddy-buddy with them or whatever, whatever the injustice was. Um, but, but trying to match that evil, that initial evil that happened to you with another ounce of evil is not, it's not going to make it any better. It truly will overcome you. So that's where our inspiration comes from today. So, you know, let's play with that forgiveness for a minute. Now, a lot of times when I have wronged someone, I will often go back to them asking for an apology and sometimes I'll bring them flowers. So we're gonna play with flowers today. Our theme this week takes a look at last week's, our spirals, I'll mend that, I'll, here's that link again, just in case you need it. Uh, we're gonna be taking that and adding to it. We're gonna be adding some flowers of forgiveness and we're gonna be letting our good overcome evil, okay? So let's take a look on a couple tips on how we can make that work. First, you're going to keep your spirals loose so that you have room to make the flowers coming out of the spiral. You'll need more room than you left last time when we made those spirals. Your second tip is to echo the flower portion of the spiral once or twice or even three times, as many times as needed to help fill the space and position yourself in a place to begin your next spiral. Lastly, you want to spiral away from the direction you want to end up going if you're in a tight space and you only want a single line of flowers. So we're gonna actually practice this design on the line designer. I think this one's a little trickier again because we're actually doing two designs. We're making that first spiral and then we're adding a secondary design to it. So let's head over. We'll take a look at practicing it first on paper and then we will head over to the sewing machine. So here's our trusty line designer. I'll pop a link to it below if you haven't used this before. I'll also put a link up here for you if you'd like to check this out in greater detail. Now, I love this. I've got my, my fabric ready to go and my, my needle is in the down position. So we're gonna go ahead and just practice this together. So we're first gonna start off a little bit here. We'll make our curve. So you'll see with the spiral, I'm gonna stop right about here. And then I'm gonna come out of my spiral by making some flower lines. So you'll see there's my little, just like a little girl makes flowers. I used to draw these when I was a kid. And then I'm gonna actually make a second set. And I'm gonna show you what effect that makes. So you'll see now you'll see you have a little bit softer of a design going around it. And the same little sharp spiral curve that we started with here is mirrored here. So you're making that design kind of repeat itself even when you're not making a spiral itself. So now you'll see I've made one round of my flower and I've made a second round of flower. So I'm gonna come back now and I'm going to make a spiral to come this way and then I'm gonna come out of it again. And I'm gonna purposely box myself into the corner so you can see how we come out. So I'll come out. There's a nice gentle curve. We'll do one, two, a couple little bounces here. We'll come back around. 
that was a little close. I just spray basted today and my, my cutting mat's a little sticky, so my, my, my pad is sticking to it. So you'll see now I've done my second round of flowers and I'm actually gonna now add a third because you'll see I have some space to fill. Now that's what's really nice about this design is it lets you do that. So here we're gonna add one more curve sticking to that yucky basting spray. So um, we'll just pretend this is a little bit closer. So you'll see I've got my, my little row of flowers here and now I can come down here to add a second curve. Now you'll see I've curved in because ultimately I wanna come away from that curve with my flowers when I start the flowers, okay? So there's a little bit of a, a peek into how we've created that here. I'll pop my needle off so you can see this. Again, like I said, I'm a little sticky here from some spray basting, so my, my curves aren't quite as nice as they're going to be when we head over to the machine, but that at least gives you a bit more of a feel for what we're gonna be seeing when we head over and start sewing together. All right, quick supply check before we get started. I've got my Me and My Sister's Fabric here. These are their, um, just such an adorable line. I think this is their picnic line. I'll put a link to that below. I've got just a real thin layer of batting, some plain white fabric on the back, and I've got my slow, steady roller work glider mat here. Um, again, I would never free motion quilt without this. The gloves I can almost do without, but never this mat because it just helps things slide around. So I've already gone ahead and pulled up my bottom thread. I'm using a green thread from Sulky, one of my favorite thread companies here. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, I think this fabric is fun because it kind of has that same, you know, little flower, flower design of forgiveness. So we're gonna be playing with that a lot today. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with a spiral and then we'll come out of our spiral just like we did over on our uh, line designer. So let's get started. So I'm gonna come down here and we'll just move this forward a bit here. So we'll start our spiral and you'll see, I'm not gonna make this as tight of a spiral as I did last time because I really wanna emphasize those um, those flower curves. You can already see how much smoother this is than it was on my sticky, sticky cutting table. I love basting spray, but my gosh, sometimes it just oversprays, you know? I should be doing that outside and not indoors. Okay, so I've got my little first layer here. I'm gonna pause here. So you'll see this is a real smooth and you're keeping these distances even. You don't wanna have them really too close or too far. Um, it, it's a lot more easy on the eyes when you have the same distance. Now, obviously that's up to you how tight you wanna make your spirals, how tight you wanna make your um, your flower your flower petals here. You know, if you the tighter you make them, the, the more it's gonna feel a little bit thicker. If you're working, especially with a nice thick batting and you leave a lot of space, you're gonna get some really nice little bumps and curves through your fabrics. So second tip is when you stop, always try to stop at a point. You know, we've talked about this in some of our other videos. If you stop in the middle of a curve, it's a lot harder to continue that curve without looking like you've skipped something or created like a like a rough, bumpy edge. So always try to stop at a point. You know, you've got a lot of points in this design, so there's a lot of opportunities for you to take a break to go, you know, stretch your fingers, grab a glass of water, hit the restroom, whatever you need. So let's continue here. We're gonna fall into one of our, our downward spirals of evilness here, and then we'll come out of it with some flowery forgiveness. So I'm gonna come out of here now and I'm gonna just kind of make a nice little swirl. I'm gonna make this one closer here because I wanna make my bumps now go in the opposite direction, those flower petals. So I don't want it to look too, too even. So coming in. Come up. And now I'm gonna come right back out and I'm gonna add a second layer to this one. I'm just really, it's almost like just echoing, keeping that same distance. For me, it's about, you know, about half of an inch. See, and now I, I'll come over and I'm gonna actually echo this design over here one time. And now I'm gonna start my next curve swooping around. So what's nice about this is you have a lot of freedom to really redesign this however you want. Um, and what, what I really mean by that is it's not, you're not working yourself into a certain spot because you are making the spirals and the flower petals, you've got a lot of room to move. It's, it's kind of hard to get stuck in a corner with this design because you can always just say, oh, I'm just gonna add a little flower petal here. I'm gonna add a quick spiral. Um, it's very easy to adjust. So let's actually try to do one here. So you can see, I almost look like I could be stuck in this corner. I'm gonna stop for a minute and then we'll speed things up. So you'll see, I've come right back in here. And if you can see, I've now got my flower here and I'll lift this so we can look at this together. I've got a flower kind of coming here and I've got a flower here. So 
when you find yourself worked into a corner, this is where that echo um, comes in well. So I've come in here. Now there's not really enough room to add a spiral because if I try to spiral right here, I'm gonna have to bounce back out. So instead, I'm going to come and I'm going to spiral right here over once, um, or I'm sorry, I'm going to make my little flower bump here, a flower bump here, and then that'll give me room to come back and spiral up here. So let's do that together. Put our foot back down. So I'm gonna kind of come, I'm gonna make my little flower petal here. And now I'm gonna echo this side. So I'm gonna echo once. I'm gonna echo this little flower petal there. And now I'm gonna come around and I'm just gonna start another spiral right here. Now you do wanna make your spiral tight enough that you can differentiate your spirals from your flower petals, but other than that, there's not too many specific rules that you have to keep up with this one. So I'm gonna pause here for a second. I'm gonna speed things up. We'll give me a chance to finish, give you a chance to finish, and then we will meet up at the end to take a look. take a look let's see how it turned out so here's our front um, you'll see the green blends in quite nicely with the background I really like the way that looks um, it's a little bit darker of a green a little bit more sharp than the background so you know it's probably a little bit harder for you to see it um, for me I can actually see really well the design you'll see if I hold it in the light just like that you can really see how that design pops I think it's so cute and what I also like about it is your eye really picks up how these little flower bumps kind of match the little flower bumps in the fabric. I think that's adorable. So let's take a look at the back where we've got a bit more contrast. So here's the back of our fabric. And you'll see I'm very happy with this design. I think this was super fun. I think this was a re actually a really easy design because you had total control with your bumps where you wanted to put them. You really hard to get stuck on these. You know, we talked about how if you start to get, find yourself in a corner and you get stuck, you can just use one set of little flower bumps to pull yourself out. So you'll see overall the spacing is really even. Um, there's not too many gaps, a little bit of a gap right here, but that's not, that's not too much, but you'll see. So like, let, like, let's follow one of these trails. So here's where we started. And we, you know, we did two rounds of flowers here. We did two rounds of flowers here. And then because I wanted to start filling other space, you would echo the flowers that you already made. And then you would just continue echoing the flowers from the first one you made. So you'll see those little flower bumps actually echo, um, not only your original, but can echo more than one. Now, if you wanted to really play up the flowers, you can add three or four layers of flowers. You'll see like here, it's a lot easier to see the little flower bumps um, here with those little petals, as opposed to just maybe a layer where you just have like one set. Like here, you know, this looks a little bit more like a, like a wave um, because these don't echo all the way around. Plus I only have two flowers on this, um, this curve, whereas on this curve where you've got one, two, three, four, five, because you've got more flower petals here to echo, you can really see that design pops a little bit more. So there you go. So I wish the best of you as you practice not getting lost in that downward spiral of evil, remembering that two wrongs doesn't make a right and remembering that the best way to get out of it is with good. Take care and we will see you soon in our next Free Motion Friday. If you found something helpful in this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And we would love to see you subscribe so we can continue to deliver fun content like this to you in the future. Happy sewing and we'll talk to you soon.